thank you. It was a socially distanced gathering to honor a century of life well lived. Mass family and friends came together to honor the birthday girl, Mary Mahoney Campazzi, born September 15, 1920, in Buffalo, Kentucky, 100 years ago. You don't have to be so loud about it. <laughs> but others disagreed, delivering honks and cheers to this great-grandmother and World War II veteran who served her country as a second lieutenant Army nurse officer. For two years, she cared for paralyzed soldiers sent to the Army hospital at Fort Reed in San Juan, Puerto Rico. She had a night shift for a long time and, and would care for the men, and a lot of them would get letters from the states, from family members, and she would help write them letters to answer, but mainly to get good care and hopefully get them better so they could go back home. While serving active duty, Mary Mahoney met her husband, Army First Lieutenant Joseph Campazzi, also stationed at the base. The couple married at the base chapel. Soon after, the newlyweds boarded a train for California. They bought this home in Torrance in 1951, where they would raise seven children. Mary still lives there today. While Campazzi contributed to the war effort, caring for hundreds of wounded soldiers, the role she's most noted for among her friends and family is that of mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother during her 70 years here in Torrance. Memma. She's Memma. She's always been Memma, not Grandma. We respect her so much and like all of the stories she told throughout our childhood, um, nothing but proud. I'm one of the six granddaughters and I know that we all look to her as the matriarch of the family and somebody very strong. It's been a rough year, but this has been definitely a highlight, something to look forward to. So what's Campazzi's secret for longevity, you may ask? You don't give your secrets away. Maybe not all, but we're told eating healthy, getting plenty of sleep, and faith in God are pillars the nurses live by, along with the positive attitude. As an individual growing up during the Depression, you know, she did without a lot, didn't complain, always taught us the bright side of everything. But one thing that's no secret, it's been a life surrounded by love. For Torn City Cable, Colleen Farrell. Hi, I'm Christine with Torin City Cable, and today we're expecting a very special delivery here at City Hall. This morning, uh, Sophia came in to visit me and brought in masks and facial protectors, uh, shields uh, that she has created. And I am so impressed by this young lady's ability. And in fact, it really makes me feel good to put on my little tiger mask here. Thank you, Sophia. Ten-year-old Sofia Reyes says this was the highlight of her day. It meant a lot for me for him to wear something that I made. It was really meaningful. What started out as a fourth grade school project evolved into a movement to help others during COVID-19. And I thought that my sister was also going to go back to school. So I tried a lot of different face masks on her and on me and she tried on the, one of the prototypes that I made and she was more comfortable with the cloth face mask and the face shield. She drew each animal design on dad's computer and used mostly household items. We went through the creative process to make things happen. So we have the materials available. We have some plastic binding covers. We have actually the, the sponge, we have it at home. We just bought a sticker paper to print the, the designs. Sophia says she spent most of her summer vacation creating and sharing what she made. I've been donating them to frontliners, to teachers and kids with special needs. And I've also donated them to other states. And I want to make a batch to donate to Mexico. Sophia's parents hope more families will support their children's imaginations during this pandemic. I've been working from home for, for about five months and I have more time to spend with my family, with my girls and that time has to be used in, in a meaningful way. If you have time, spend with your kids, if they have ideas, push them and make it happen. Mayor Fury echoes Ray's sentiment and challenges more Torrance residents to take part in the city's Dare to Care challenge. This should be an inspiration for a, a lot of people. When we have a fourth grader who can do something this 
positive and this progressive, what can you do? And I ask everybody, do something. Do something nice. Do something for your neighbor. Do something for your family. Do something for your friends. And just a random act of kindness. And let us know about it. Mayor Fury says this has been a memorable visit. They are the first guest I've had in City Hall for five months. One of the things you miss, or I miss, uh, as a mayor is the personal interaction. That is what I always say, the best part of being a mayor. He hopes more people will continue spreading kindness throughout our city as we continue navigating through this time in history together. It's the Torrance way. It really is. And, and it's the Torrance family. Mm -hmm. And it's not just one family. It's all 148,000 or so people that live here. We're all one big family. At City Hall, I'm Christine Lee. Hi, my name is April Numamoto, and I'm going to do a short little demo on how to paint on glass. Um, I work for the City of Torrance in the Visual Arts Department, so I hope you come and take a class. It's very simple. We use special paints, um, and I'm going to show you how we're going to kind of etch our glass so that the uh, painting will go a little smoother and easier. Here are a few little samples. Um, where I used uh, special paints um, and we do a special outliner and these are all permanent on glass and this one here is um, actually done in oils but you know you can anything that you have uh, dollar store go to the dollar store and pick up some neat stuff um, and I'm gonna do a sh short little demo here um, what I did on the glasses first is I etched um, this one is not etched, but when you etch the surface, it, the paint just um, sticks a lot stronger and the painting goes a little easier and the colors look actually brighter. And, and what I used here is the etch-all, really simple. Um, you put this into a plastic container, just pour it to the level where you want it etched, leave it in there for 15 minutes and wash it off and you get this here and um, with the etching you can use a pencil or a chalk to do any kind of outlining so you know to make your painting a little easier what i'm going to do is show you just a quick demo on here how i'm going to paint it on my, my glass so this one i'm going to really explain how i do my strokes load the paints um, and the colors i'm using the uh, these paints here are acrylic acrylic paints and this is called multi-surface which means you can paint on glass wood paper all different surfaces and it is permanent get all my little colors here so we use a lot of different shades of yellow our greens and when you're doing your strokes, you want to make sure when you paint on glass uh, that you use soft bristle synthetic br brushes so that the paint will lie or lay smoother on your surface as you're stroking. Yeah, I like using a lot of colors. You don't have to use as many as I do here. And since I'm doing it on paper, I'm going to use a special medium. This is a special medium that allows the paint to glide on surfaces that are porous because the paper will soak up the paint and won't stroke as nicely. So we use a little bit of this. Um, these are the brushes I'm using. They're flat synthetic brushes. Um, and there are all different types of brushes that make your painting easier. And what I'm using are the flat ones. Um, so I'm going to first wet the brush. This is my, just my little palette. You can get a little container, fill it up with water. So you want to start off with um, water on the brush, but then you want to pinch off all the liquid. And I'm going to pick up some yellow here and a little bit of this light brown okay and our little medium okay. 
pick up a lot more paint here. So what I did here, if you can see, is I just did a little sketch with my chalk. And that will kind of help you with your, um, your painting. So I'm just quickly adding my little petals. I'm going to paint this sunny sunflower here. And I'm laying my brush, loading it really well. It has a lot of paint. Go close to the center and just pull. So touch my chisel, and your chisel is the very bottom of your brush. So I'm touching right there on my chisel, push down a little bit, and slowly lift upwards. So this painting has a, uh, several little layers. So we're going to first do our... Okay. So touch push down, slowly release, drag your chisel outwards. Okay, and then I'm going to paint our center with this brown on one side, <clears throat> and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of the dark brown, touch a black. So there's three colors loaded on here, and I'm going to pounce, 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 pounce. So it's real important you have a lot of paint on your brush. Okay, so we've got the center there. Going back to the same brush, I'm going to now pick up a little bit of white to my lighter yellow. And we're just going to overlap and paint more petals on here. It's just to fill it up. chisel, push down, always picking up more paint, and this medium, medium with a lot of paint allows the paint to just glide on your surface, because on paper it's uh, very porous, so this kind of helps. Okay, so something like that there. Now I'm going to paint my leaves, clean this out, get all the paint, and you want to make sure you pinch off all the liquid. And I'm going to load my brush with my dark green and light green. So I'm kind of doing half and a half here dark green on one side and the lighter green on the other opposite side. Push down and blend. And I'm just going to soften that bright green a little bit with a little white. And you can even use a little yellow. Okay, so I've got my blended and this is, and what I see here is what it's going to look on the, the paper here. So right now I'm taking the heel of the brush and just kind of filling in the center area of the leaf. And now picking up more paint with a little bit of the, my medium on my chisel. I'm going to take my brush with the darker green on the outside. Okay. Pick up more paint and do the same thing on the opposite side. Smooth out the center and kind of pull in for your... Okay, we'll do the same thing over here. Got another leaf. Fill in. So I'm just kind of filling in with a lighter color. And now with my dark color on the opposite side. And pull out your, and do a few little, few little leaves here. Okay. 
And I'm using the big brush here because our surface is a little larger here. Demoing. Maybe a few little ones here. So get your nice skinny lines, just drag the chisel, place my chisel on your surface, push down a little bit and slowly release the pressure. Okay, now we're going to re be ready and do this on our glass. Okay, so I will take this. Just kind of want to show you how it looks here. This is kind of neat. Just took a wine bottle and etched the surface, painted on the glass. And then if you look at it carefully, there's a little dimensional outlining. And I use this permanent um, dimensional paint for glass. And after I paint, I do a little outlining. It just gives it a little extra touch. Okay, so that's what we're going to be painting. So here. I took my chalk. So remember, when you etch it, you can, it uh, chalk does a uh, stick. So you can use a, you can use chalk or a pencil. So I kind of sketched in my area there. So let me get a smaller brush. And since I'm switching my uh, surface to glass. I'm using brushes that are a little bit softer and not as stiff. Okay, Same brush, a little bit smaller too because my, my surface is small. Wet the brush, get all the liquid out, pinch, pinch. And pick up my colors again. So same thing, using my different shades of yellow. Using my dark and light colors. And, and you see how nicely it uh, glides on glass. So glass is a really fun surface to paint on. Because if you make a mistake, you can wipe it off too. Wipe it off and start over. Okay, there's my first layer of petals. Then I'll add my center here. There's a smaller, smaller little brush that I can use here. So a little black, dark brown, and light brown. And kind of just pounce, 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 pounce. Okay, by double loading, it allows you to get that dark shading on the bottom, a little bit of darkness at the top. I'm just going to add a little more brown on the top. Looks good. Stick it in here. Now taking my smaller flat brush, add the lighter petals. So your yellow, a little bit of white and a little bit of brown. Touch. Add more petals here. I think I need a little more yellow. And this is a metal palette that I'm using. Just kind of nice. When you're done, you can just rinse it off, wash it off. So fill it up with more petals. So the second layer of petals, I'm just doing it slightly lighter so that it will stand up 
and because it's closer to you as well. So it's just a little bit lighter. Okay. Wash out your brush. And pinch off the water. And I'm going to pick up my two greens again. Dark green on one corner and the light green on the opposite side. I'm just going to soften it a little bit on the lighter side by picking up some white and some light yellow. Blend in the same spot. So it kind of softens that green. And now taking the heel of my brush, I'm just filling in around the center where the leaf will go. Load with more paint and with the dark green on the opposite side or outside. Paint your Okay, so there's one leaf there, let's add maybe another one over here, and remember if you make a mistake you can just rinse it off and start over. So taking my dark green, so right there and wipe that off. Got to always have a lot of paint on your brush. And push out. And then a few little. So here, just lay my chisel, push down a little bit, slowly start to release the pressure so you get a nice little point. And maybe a little bit, a few right over here. Okay, and wipe it off here. So with that, we've got I got this paper towel in here. Whoops. So that you can see, see a little bit better. I'm going to use this dimensional um, outliner. And this is permanent. Once everything is dry and cured, this is permanent on glass. So you can wash it. Um, I would hand wash all of this. And this is uh, the fun part where if a petal does not look nice or the shape is not as uh, what you want it to be, you can just outline it and create it with your outliner. Just want to make sure that your, your uh, squeeze on the tube is even. You don't want to squeeze too hard. And I've got a lot of petals here. You don't have to outline every single one, but I would do the ones that are closer to you that are on top. And you may have to practice this a little bit before you use it if this is your first time. And you can use this on all surfaces. But this is nice because it is permanent on glass. So right here. And this dimensional color, I'm using gold. It comes in all different colors. Squeeze. And okay, those are the petals. Now just kind of do the center here. And I just like to add a little, a few little dots just to give your painting a little more dimension. Now with my leaves. Once in a while you do have to kind of wipe it off. Wipe off your tip if it starts to clog. Now if it does start to dry out, 
you can um, repuncture the opening there with a little pin and you want to hold this kind of like a, pen a pencil and you squeeze with your thumb here and when you're outlining it doesn't have to be right on the edge of your painting Just a few little veins so this just gives it a little more detail right here. And go over here on this side. Pull the stem through. few more veins here. Okay. And I think we're almost done. Just a few little details. Just going to do some little tendrils. You can even add your name with this. Write your name. And and any chalk, chalk lines, remember you could just, after all this uh, dries, you can just wipe it off, hand wash, and um, it will last you a long time. Hope you enjoyed the video, short little video, and give, your, give this a, a try. It's a lot of fun.